strength. We thank you, Lord, as we come together, Lord, that, that you lift us up. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. That's what it says. So, Father, I lift up each and every single person there this morning. Uh, Jimmy, those that are about to come, Adam, Zoe, brothers and sisters, because your word says when two are gathered in your name, that you're in the midst of us. And we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And thank you, Lord, for the gift that you give each and every single one of us. Thank you for the word that it says, though it shall confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in our heart that God has been raised from the dead, that we shall be saved. Thank you, Father, that you've saved each and every single one of us. Thank you for what you've given us, life. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you that we're breathing. Thank you for our health. Thank you for the things that we, we have with you this morning, that our wealth, our health, our homes, our family, our children, our work, our jobs, our communities, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for everything you, that you give us, our recovery, our family, Lord. I thank you for these things, Lord. I, I just pray as we just lift each and every single person up, that we, we come into that place of, of gratitude and not attitude, that you can help us understand the things that you want us to do. So as I go into our reading today, let's just do, go into a time of worship and uh, let's just... Um, move with the power of the holy spirit i to welcome everyone here this morning god bless you all worship our lord god thank you jesus that we worship you no he is enough jeremiah 29 11 says well i know the thoughts that i think towards you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope Father, i pray that more can come to know your peace and hope Lord, for those that are perishing in this world today we just pray that you will lift them up they may come to know you because we know that your thoughts are best Father, we thank you as we just plough through this devotional morning, as we look at any scriptures and the words that you put on my, my heart this morning. We just pray, Lord, that, that your word will land in our hearts and our spirit this morning. Thank you, Jesus, as we come. We invite your Holy Spirit in here right now thank you father god good morning all it's always good to see you in the morning and welcome everybody here it's good to see nicole adam michelle jimmy zoe you know, brother conscious coming in right now and it's just always great being fellowship um you know when two are gathering in, in, in the word of god he's in the midst of us and it's beautiful that we can be in the midst of the word of god here this morning we know in Jeremiah 29, 11, it talks about the thoughts that I think towards you. Imagine that, you know, thinking about the true God, the true living God's thoughts towards you. Think about that. Do you know what I mean? You know, the, the, the most important person in the whole of the universe, planet, heavens and earth, thinking about his thoughts towards you hallelujah that shows that we are significant you know if god is basically thinking about in, in jeremiah 29 it speaks about for i know the thoughts that i think towards you that god is up there you know in the heavenly realms thinking about his thoughts towards each and every single one of us that touches my heart it says, says the Lord, and he's and, and it talks about the thoughts that he's actually um thinking about us. He's thinking about thoughts of peace, thoughts of not evil, to give us a future and a hope. You know, that and that brings me to the connection of um the father's love. 
and as a father you know somebody who's got children you you always look at you know your kids you wanting to have a bright future and to have hope for them you know as they go on to grow in their life so it shows clearly because some of us might have been brought up i know myself i wasn't brought up with a with a father figure in my life but it shows clearly and some of us might not even have parents that are with us today for any particular reason but i wanted to demonstrate this because it shows clearly the father's love for us that we I can acknowledge today that we still will have a father in heaven that cares about our future, that cares about what we do, that cares about what we think and has a uh, uh, is always watching over us, is always thinking towards us. And it clearly shows us the things that he's thinking about us, thoughts of peace and thoughts of love and thoughts of a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Absolutely beautiful. And it, and it shows us here clearly that God's thoughts are best. Hallelujah. And just because we know that God has a plan for our future, that doesn't mean we should just fold up our arms and, and wait for it to happen. No. We have to, you, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and everything shall be added unto us because it's not going to just fall into our laps and neither should be we feel with doubts or any uncertainty or insecurities by wondering which way God's will might be for us you see many shirts for prophets who have a spirit of um, foretelling God's will and we can state that it's not God's will for us to live by what comes out of the heads of man and woman or others. It's not God's will for us to be seeking our mediators. Um, it's not God's will for us to be seeking others to, to rely on, you know, what they say about our life and what our life is going. Because he has a will for you. And he wants to know you. You see, God's will is expressed in the word of God. And this is why we need to be in the word. You know, it says, I have come that way that they may have life, that they may have it more abundantly. It says, I am the Lord who heals you. Amen. <laughs> I am the Lord who heals you. A man is not established by wickedness. And the scripture clearly talks about the just shall live by faith. So we need faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because faith is what um, um, pleases God. And this is how the children of God live by. We must live by faith. The spirit of God gives them an inspiration. It gives us a plan. We know that God has a plan for each and every single one of us. It's like an idea or a thought, but he also gives us an assurance of what we have to do. We need to seek him. We need to be in fellowship with him. It's relationship, not religion. Amen. And based on that assurance, we've got to be motivated as children of God. We've got to be motivated to move forward. We've got to be motivated to, to know more of our God. We've got to be motivated mm. to be edified, to be lifted up, to be delivered, to be healed, to, to be transformed. Mm. Oh, to be imitating God's example and his image. Mm. Amen. Preach. And you know what? As we live by faith, we move forward because we know God's will is sovereign over our life. Amen. You know, having an assurance that it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, that God's will is sovereign. That we go back to that scripture, Old Testament scripture there, that Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the thoughts and I Think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. We have a future and a hope. 
no matter where we are in our life right now, God has given you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. He has Hallelujah. a plan for you. He has a plan for you to be executed in your life. No matter what anybody's telling you right now, no matter where you are right now, I am here to tell you that God has given you a future and a hope. You might not be able to see that future right now. And this is why we need faith. Faith is the assurance and the evidence of things that are unseen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember when I came back into recovery eight years ago, uh, you know, completely broken man. Do you know what I mean? And it was, it was you know, I'd lost everything. Do you know what I mean? My house, uh, my children, you know, my money, my business, you know, everything, you, you know, everything that I had, you know what I mean? Everything that I had, I end up on the streets, homeless, you know, um, addicted to drugs, the, the, uh, you know, the, the whole mess that went shebang with it, you know, done a complete full circle, you know, uh, you know, and it was, it, it was traumatic. It was the most traumatic mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, but in that four years in the wilderness, you know, and it was a wilderness, you know, and and, and, and mm. there, was lots, there was lots of um things that was happening. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, uh, I was <clears throat> having lots of fun, as I thought it was. Hallelujah! But yeah. I'm going on, <laughs> I was just being a rebellious, you know, mm. you know, one. Um, didn't want to do anything else but just wanted to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it and you know I was like a sinking ship yeah it was like it was like um being in quicksand and just like slip oh. away and, and 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 I had a metaphor I mean this is that the, the the insanity of my madness I had a metaphor that if I sunk below five to ten foot I wasn't coming back. And there'd be times I'd be engaging my sinking feeling in my life. Hallelujah. Mm. You know, and every time I was sinking, you know, I was kind of like uh, moving forward, asking God to help me, you know, still having faith that, you know, I'm going to turn this around. Do you know what I mean? Still having faith I'm going to turn this around. Didn't know how I was going to turn this around. Didn't know when I was going to turn this around. Didn't know how it was going to orchestrate. But I knew and I held on that I, I was going to turn this around through the power of God. And I didn't know. And God told me very, very clearly one day, you know, particularly my life was like a like a roller coaster at that time and it was like it roller coaster in 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 the sense of you know it was just uh, uh um days of pure highs pure lows high low high low high low high low high low high low it's like a pack of cards high low 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 and in this high low high low high low high low high low high low you get loads of feelings and emotions and every time those feelings and emotions those low feelings and emotions were coming i'd look for something else to take it away whether it be drugs alcohol whatever it is you know women partying, gambling, whatever it was, to take away that feeling. And I would go round the clock to run that high low, 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 high low. And that would be my life. High low, high low, high low, high low. It was like a marching order. High low, 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 high low. And it was just mental. High low, high low, high low, high low. Bang, 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 bang. And and I used to say to God, you know, how can you sustain me with these high lows, high lows, high lows, high lows, high lows, high lows, high lows? And, you know, because I was always in that position where I'd be high, low, high, low, high, low. One day I'd had enough. And I said, God, what do you want me to do? And he said to me, one word, surrender. Just one word came into my spirit. He said, hey, and, and, in, and in this word of surrender, you know, God was speaking to me all the time. You know, in this high, low, high, low, high, low, I would hear the voice all the time of, ain't you had enough yet? Ain't you had enough yet? Ain't you had enough yet? And in this ain't you had enough yet, my hard heart that will be, that will be um, in this 
this spiritual darkness will be, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. But God will be gentle. Ain't you had enough yet? No, I haven't. Ain't you had enough yet? No, I haven't. But it's one day that ain't you had enough came in. And I remember surrendering. I said, right, I've had enough. And it was just as easy as that. Right, I've had enough. You know, there was no rehab. There was no um, intervention. There was no anything else. It was, okay, go and see your brother. You've been avoiding him. And I went to see my brother. I went to see went to see my brother. And um, I spent a week with him. And that was traumatic. It was traumatic because I... I, I um, I took my brother to his first rehab. And um, at that point in time, he was eight years clean. And uh, I had to humble myself to go and see my brother. And in that time I spent with my brother, I spent a couple of weeks with him. You know, we got um, prayer, we got clean and everything else. And, you know, we thought we fell out for some particular reason. And I went back on my way, on my merry, merry way. Again, that was the Lord. That argument, I, I never forget it. Do you know what I mean? Um, it was it was thirty days um, before Lent at the time. Thirty days before Lent, and I remember that when I walked out two weeks, there was about ten days, and my brother and my mum at the time said they're going to start praying for me because they was both in that house and they said they're going to start praying for me from the start of Lent until the end. And the fifth week, I was, I, I didn't know any about this. Do you know what I mean? I left that house at that time. Um, I went away and before I knew it, um, I ended up in a, a, a rehab in South London. And in that rehab in South London, uh, I was doing my first chair in Clapham Common, nearly six weeks clean. In that meeting, you know, my brother was in that meeting and he said, him and my mother had prayed every day for 40 days so that when they left, when I, when I left that house, that I'll, they prayed for 40 days that I would be clean. Not only I'll be, that I'll be clean, that I would stay clean. And he revealed that story and that plan to me two weeks into, two weeks after Lent, six weeks clean. For 40 days, he and my mother prayed for me. Very important that we pray for people. Very important. It says they move forward because they know that God's will is sovereign. And it will accomplish. Our prayers will accomplish when we stand in the gap for others. It's their job to make their choices out of faith. It's our job to make our choices out of faith. No matter where we are right now, it's your job to make your choices out of faith. Choose right now. Choose life or choose death. We must not allow our doubts to paralyze us. Doesn't matter where you are right now. Do not doubt. Don't let those doubts of fear paralyze you. It's your job to believe without doubt and believe to the end. According to the word of God, which is expressed and expresses the will of God for all his children, his thoughts are peace and not evil, to give us a life full of abundance, a future, a whole life that's, world, that's worthwhile. Armed with these promises, we must stand up and conquer. Pride and self-centeredness are two roots of any addiction. How do we overcome pride? I stayed in that pride for about four years. I stayed in that rebellion for about four years. How does God see us? God sees us as sinners in need of a saviour. We need to acknowledge that we need a saviour when we're going through stuff. How do we overcome self-centeredness? We overcome self-centeredness by seeing the needs of others before our own. 
And what's a good way to begin this progress? We begin by praying for others. That's what my mum and my brother did for me at the time. They set aside everything that they did and they prayed. We can't just cut off a weed at the top. It will grow back. We need to pull out weeds along with its roots. Eradicate it. We need to. We need to pull out those weeds. In this case, the weeds represent our addiction, our traits, our flesh, our habits. We need to pull out those weeds. As I said, as I said those weeds can represent our addiction. If we look at the grass that grows in my in my garden, right? I, we have to keep pruning, keep mowing, keep lawning the grass. So some of us that come from those addictive backgrounds, those addictive, like we've got to keep mowing, we've got to keep weeding out some of those traits and those bad habits that can enable us to sink back into the trap. We've got to keep pruning. You see, those weeds represent our addictions and the roots we want to pull out or eliminate are that, is that pride and that self-centeredness that can be in our life. And we know that some roots grow deeper than others. And sometimes those roots are even harder to pull out. Have you ever looked in a thorn bush or looked in a tree when, you, when you've left the garden, you know, and you've left it unweeded, you know, you've got to get the gloves on. You ain't going in there with your hands. You ain't going in like with that and then pulling it out. You've got to go in there and pull out some of those roots. You see, because we know change is not going to be easy. But pulling out those roots like the dentist pulls out a teeth, it can be painful. And as addicts, alcoholics, you know, those that come from those backgrounds, you know, or, or, or the lifestyle. It can be painful and we must truly desire that these roots need to be removed. Step six and seven talks about how we give them to God. But we've got to play our part. It's one thing acknowledging our defects. They desire these roots to be removed or the effort will fall short of that desired effect. It's easy to see pride and self-centeredness in others. The trick is to see it in ourselves. I always talk about the Pharisee in me. It's easy for me to see the Pharisee in others, but I need to look at the Pharisee in me. You know, when we look at the Pharisees in, in, in the Bible, you know, uh, I don't get too excited about the Pharisees in the Bible. I get more concerned about the Pharisee in me. You see, people make comments. We should always be encouraged to include themselves, you know, and um, we should always take that person aside and encourage him. But we should always be saying that our experience can help others. What does it mean to restore? It means to bring back into existence to use back an original or former desirable condition. God has restored us and is restoring us back into our original form. As addicts, do we need to be restored? Yeah, we do. Can you make a fire in his bosom and his clothes not to be burnt? Does sin come with a cost? Of course it does. Do you know the cost up front? No. Will you ever know the entire cost of your sin and all of the lives impacted by it? Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which these are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envy and murder, drunkenness, reveling, such like of which I tell you before, those highs and lows, was me in all of that sin.
How many of these works of the flesh do you need or do you think are rooted in pride or self-centeredness? I didn't care. I didn't care what people thought. I didn't care about my family. I didn't care about my poor mother. I didn't care about no one but myself. We need to be restored, but we need to be first reconciled to God. Because I didn't care about God either. Today, I care. I care about what he thinks of me. I care about how his thoughts are towards me. And the difference today is I get not the judgmental, not the criticism, but the God of peace and the God of love. I sometimes even hear, do you know what, Ivor? I'm well pleased with you. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Hear God. That we can feel God. That we can know God. That we can know that he is with us. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that I shall fear no evil. That his rod shall comfort us and deliver us and heal us. Why do you think God would die for you? Why was it necessary for our God to die for us? So that we could be reconciled back to him. 1 Corinthians 14, 20 says, Beverin, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice, be babes. But in understanding, be mature. In that four years, my madness, I didn't want to grow up. I didn't want to do what my daddy told me, or what my mummy told me, or what my friends told me, or what those around me that loved me. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Growing up is not about wanting to do what you want to do. It's about having to stop and think about others. There's a description of a child of God, a baby towards evil, but mature in understanding. Mature enough to discern between what is right and what is wrong. When I look at my daughters today, I've been blessed to have three beautiful daughters. And I believe that God put those three daughters in my life to help me to grow up. Because the joy that those three daughters give me today, as I see them growing up, as I see them going through that adolescence and as I see them going through those changes as a father one I'm filled with compassion I'm filled with love I'm filled with joy and I'm filled with you know what it doesn't matter what's going on in the world today things I might not have any control over but by faith I know that my children have a hope in the future. And I know that God is saying to each and every single one of us that we have a hope and a future. And we can have peace and access in that situation. You see, being mature in evil is not part of the kingdom of God. When I was out there, I was a ruthless addict. And I look back, I was full of evil. And there's no place for evil or misconduct in the kingdom of God. On the other hand, those who are babies in understanding 
are emotional and will inevitably backslide right out of God's kingdom. We need to be careful of our emotions. What do I mean by that? At age 10 years clean, sponsoring 20 people, um, having a life beyond my wildest dream, so it was called, having a, uh, a business and a phone and having loads of numbers. One day I looked at my phone and I looked and I thought, do you know what? How many of these people really, really care about me? You know what? That thinking was all about me. And through that self centeredness and through that, that thinking, it was all about me. I backslid right back to drinking and using again. It took another 10 years, by the way. 10 years in meetings. 10 years not in meetings. 20 years unfulfilled, clean and crazy. Backslid. How do you mature in faith? A pastor will not make you mature. Your friends will not make you mature. Your sponsor will not make you mature. It's the Holy Spirit. Won't make you mature. What makes you mature are the deserts, the trials, and the problems that you have to face alone with your God. And if you remain firm in your faith, the more trials that you go through, the more mature you become with your faith. The more deserts you cross while holding on to your faith, the more mature and the more experienced your faith becomes. And you'll be ready to face those new challenges. 2024 is going to bring you some deserts. 2024 is going to bring you some trials. 2024 is also going to give you some tribulations in your faith. Stay firm in the desert. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to those difficult moments that you're going through right now. By doing that, your faith will mature. And you will remain steadfast in the kingdom of God. And you will see that in all of this, that God is with you. And there's nothing better than going through life and life's terms with God, holding your hand, walking you through, just like that footprints in the sand. But this time we know that God is with us. As Romans said, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. Bless each and every single person here this morning. Father, I pray. I know that we've got trials and tribulations for every person that's here this morning. I pray that you continue to, to build up character of faith right now in each and every person here baba i thank you for the anointing that's flowing right here right now because i know <laughs> through the power of the holy spirit that we are moving with you and if you are for us who can be against us amen hallelujah i'm so excited um yeah. looking forward to tomorrow night for our um start of our uh, discipleship course i'm really looking forward to that guys um in our invested life i would really um hope to see you guys there 7 45 p.m um final call you're going to need your book hallelujah uh began the journey for the next 10 10 10 weeks you know and i believe that god is going to transform and um open up some some deep knowledge within and um some life-changing stuff that's going to happen um 
and it's just beautiful just to be with you guys and uh to be here this morning and uh and it's open if anybody wants to come in and share back feel free to do so The highs and the lows, man. Amen. Powerful. Really oh, powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. Really powerful, man. There's a lot of similarities in our testimonies, man. That was powerful. I appreciated that. Appreciate those words, man. So thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Michelle, come in. Yeah, so just a thank you, really. I'm, I, I, I'm struggling myself, really, with, like you say, emotions. You know, it's so easy, isn't it? Even when you're doing what you think is right, and obviously when you are walking right, people don't like you and stuff like that. Um, you, It's really helped me. Um, I'm struggling a little bit. You know, I think I've shared with you over about my my ex-groomer. She's... um setting her own little business up just a stone throw which I'm I, I bless her and everything but people are turning and twisting and turning and it's like you get feel so wounded and you're like well what have I done you know I've not done anything to anybody and you can get so focused on yourself and you've really helped me because I've got to pray for my enemies I've got to pray and bless them and bless them and and it's so opposite to our rotten human nature isn't it you know we're so selfish so I just wanted to say thank you because I'm really I'm going through a bit of a passage but as you say I'm going more towards God's will I've been wanting this for ages really you know sometimes we talk ourselves into like a oh poor me but actually it's lining up with what I've been wanting for ages but it just you just get wounded and you're right it goes back to those strongholds that we were talking about on Sunday we mustn't let anything anything get in our way because it's just letting the devil right in so just thank you for that and bless you thank, thank you. you bless you bless you and i thought i was meant to bring you yesterday you um you were one of my last tenants for a discipleship course yes so just to let you know. <laughs> beautiful absolutely and they're so powerful michelle do you know what i mean and it's and it's so um good to hear you know that god is strengthening you in this situation you know, there's something in this that God <sighs> wants to strengthen you with and show you. And I believe that you're going to have a powerful testimony yeah, as you go through this process. It's, yeah. it's, 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 um, it's so challenging. Do you know what I mean? I know mm. when, when we go through difficulties and situations, you know, um, I, I, I had a situation uh, recently and uh, it, you know, it took six months to go through this whole process. And you know what? I, 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 um, I came back stronger, feeling better, you know, and also mm. the, the most important thing within that six months, I kept my dignity, I kept my morality and I didn't slander, I didn't do anything else in it. I kept everything else. And I'm, and, and it's like, God just showed me, do you know what I mean? How much, you know, the change, of you know being renewed and transformed when you're going through these situations when we do things differently we really see the fruit of what god is doing in your life and and i tell you what you know rather than holding on to the self-centeredness and the pain and the and and all the stuff that goes into me i'd rather hang on to the fruit that god is implanting in you in this situation yeah. and go, wow this is a transformed character this is yeah. a miracle how I'm behaving in this. In fact, am I praying for this person? Am I blessing this person? This is just not normal for me. Hallelujah. This is it. Yeah. So and keep it on keeping on. Hallelujah in that area. And you're going to see the miracle in this for you. Thank you. Bless you. Yeah, it's really <laughs> tough because, you know, when we last spoke, I, you know, when you bless someone, it can make them worse. You know, yeah. you, do, do you know what I mean? And that's the hard bit. When you're really nice to people and you say, well, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that. They shut you down even more. It's like the world can't take it in a way. Well, you know, it's like it's, it's so powerful. I mean, it's like you know, <laughs> yesterday we got news. Yesterday, do you know what I mean? Um, the, the, the one of the ladies, do you know what I mean? 
just through standing up and being challenged uh, as it turned out that you know that the problems that we went through me and Gemma um they um, the other people have went through but nobody stand up and they removed the woman from the the, the um from her post oh <laughs> yeah that and, surprised but, me. <laughs> and it was like you know it's not because you know we did anything we just basically stood firm and 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 stood that stood that truth but also spoke out about that truth you know this was not right do you know what i mean and mm. sometimes we can take um you, you, you know you know but it's how we deal with it it's dealing with it with integrity it's dealing with it in love it's channeling it in the right direction it's having that humility and patience that God is in control. He's fighting the battle. He's already prepared the battle for you. Hallelujah. It's already done. Do you know what I mean? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, bro. Amen. Very lift up, you. lift up. Is that Sister <laughs> Maxine or Brother Conan? Sister yeah, Maxine. Sister Maxine. Yeah, hi. Good morning. Sorry, because Conan's um, lost his phone, isn't he? But, uh, yes, I just listened to the to the last bits, brother, um, Pastor, and... Um, I'm having a lot of trouble and the enemy is using people because I think that's what the enemy does, isn't it? He gets to us by the people yeah. and then he gets a stronghold in the mind. That's what's happened to me the last few days. So I just wanted to to say that that's how, that's how we're in this battle. The battle is not of flesh and blood, but it's of principalities and high places and strong towers. Amen. Yeah. That's how he opens the door through our weaknesses. Amen, Sister Maxine. Sister Maxine's been listening to the teaching. Hallelujah. Bless yeah, you. I'm going to listen, listen to it later today. But Amen. Bless everybody. Michelle, you're not alone, sister. Amen. We're in, this, we're in this walk and it's a battle and it's not the battle of people. Go the on, enemy uses pitch people because they're not of God. Preach, Maxine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're just we're come not dealing with flesh and blood. Amen, sister. Yeah. Amen. It's it's yeah. my sister. She's just come to faith, and God's blessing her. And I just got this thought, whether it's from the God or from the enemy, that is is gonna is gonna. You know when um, where is it in the Bible where he uses God uses Saul? King Saul doesn't do righteously by God's standards, so he brings up. David as king and I was thinking you know my sister has is got rid of all her stuff she's really got a humble heart and there's me got all my stuff around me keeping my stuff and I'm realizing it's a millstone around my neck because what good is that stuff that I'm holding I'm hoarding it's nothing that's, that was my stuff. <laughs> so it's to be generous in spirit as well, isn't it? It's not to hold on to things. Amen. It's blessing somebody else when you can bless someone else. Physically, you know, give away what we've got. Mm. God bless you. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you. Thank you, Maxine, for that. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for that. Beautiful. And uh, look forward to um, the, uh, our prayer session uh, on Friday. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Absolutely you. wonderful. Bless you, Maxine. Keep on plowing through. I just want to lift you up this week. I just want to commend you for, you know, really taking a hold of your walk and um, seeking uh, and delving and reading and your relationship with God and challenging yourself with, you know, the things that are around. I just want to lift you up and encourage you. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, you are a, 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 a beautiful stu student for me. I learned so much through you hallelujah you, you you don't know how much you helped me in terms of my walk 
<laughs> so you are just a beautiful student. I hope you keep challenging me and turning up and bringing your beautiful self the way you are. Just come as you are and keep on keeping on because you are a blessing. Hallelujah. I want to tell you right now. You Amen. are a blessing. Amen. You are a blessing. You are, you are teaching me so much. And I just want you to just lift you up i just want to thank god for your life i want to thank god for your 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 surroundings i want to thank god for your faith i want to thank god for who you are and i tell you what we are looking forward to sister maxine's testimony this amen week. amen <laughs> hallelujah so we look forward to it we look forward to that maxine <laughs> Don't you go! Don't you go missing on me, Maxine. No, I'm, 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 you've got to tell me when, though. Uh, Friday morning, six thirty, as you know. Oh, all right, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> bless you. God bless you. God bless you, brother Connor. <laughs> wow. Brother Connor, was you coming in? I saw your hand up. I you in the chat. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. So, uh, so you know, I, I'm really touched by the challenges and by, you know, um, the sharebacks in terms of the, you know, we're going for it, but we live by faith. Hallelujah. The, the just shall live by faith. I just want to bless everyone there. Good to see you, Sister Pearl, Nicole, Michelle, Maxine, Con, Zoe, Jimmy, Adam. Bless you in the name of Jesus. We just lift up every single person. And Father, I thank you for this time together, for this fellowship. Lord, and, and though that we're going through some difficulties and challenges, Father, you, you are in the fire with us, Lord, that you just help us, Lord. I thank you that you continue to deliver us and heal us and guide us of everything that you do in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Lord, Lord, help us in our difficulties. Lord, guide us, lead us. Lord, protect us, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you are with us, that you are for us in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray today that you continue to be a blessing to all those around us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Continue to, 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 to lift us up, elevate us, quick us in our mind and our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We thank you, Jesus. We know that you are at work in each and every single one of our lives and that you give us a plan for us to prosper that you give us a hope a peace a comfort that you are here with each and every single one of us bless us as we go in peace and serve you in jesus mighty name we pray amen may god bless you all and may god keep you and may god continue to shine his face among each and every single one of you and give you his peace go and serve the lord your god see you all tomorrow night and see you all friday morning sister maxi god bless you all okay take care shalom 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 shalom